Jeremy. You got that right. Well, so I decided to do this topic. We're about to get into it here. All right, so I decided to do this topic tonight on the Trinity. All right, uh, you know, this may not be in order sequentially as we do these broadcasts, but every now and then I want to bring to your memory uh, just some of the basics about the simple gospel. As I said in the beginning of this program, that, you know, it is the, the gospel is so simple that a three-year-old child can understand it, hear it by faith, and be saved by God's grace. And yet, the gospel is so deep and so complex. Even though it's simple, it's not complicated, but it's complex, multifaceted. You see, the manifold wisdom of God folded up into two beams of wood. You hear me? The the message of the cross, the gospel, is so simple, a three-year-old child can understand it, but it's so deep and so complex that it takes theologians and doctors decades of their life to even begin scratching the surface on the beauties of the gospel. I'm going to read you something out of... now. So the mystery of the gospel can be revealed to the least of the least. I'm telling you, it doesn't take a super genius. Okay, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon. And there's another double entendre. All right, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to understand the mysteries of the gospel, such as the Trinity. Okay, now this is classic Orthodox faith. All right, I told you, I'm going to pull out the whiteboard tonight. Okay, now, uh, best summed up in the words of the Athanasian Creed. Athanasius said, Athanasius, in the Athanasian Creed, okay, you look that up, it, I'll, I'll uh, put it here for you on the screen. Let me flip this over here. The Athanasian Creed, okay? That's how you spell that, Athanasian Creed, all right? Now, Athanasius said, We worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is all one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal, such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father is incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Spirit incomprehensible. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, and the Holy Spirit eternal, and yet They are not three Eternals, but one Eternal. Take a look at any cult or cultish group, and I guarantee, okay, that's the end of the quote there, but uh, there's a whole lot more to it, but that's where this is, I'm reading from my notes here. And yet they are not three Eternals, but one Eternal, okay? And then uh, just a note for you to take home. If you take a look at any cult or cultish group, I guarantee that you will find some twisting or skewing of the nature of God. What the devil, uh, or the question, why does the devil attack the triune nature of God? Because the gospel cannot stand without it. Okay? The gospel cannot stand without the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, of course, the the word Trinity does not uh, exist in the text of Scripture because it's a Latin term, and the book was written. uh, These books were written in either, um, what's it called? Greek, Greek or Hebrew, amen? 
Okay. So in the book of John, in Jesus' baptism, okay? John was baptizing in the wilderness. And the next day he sees Jesus coming to him and says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Now, John was a Levite. Okay, John was a Levite, as we saw uh, in Luke. Many people read Luke, the Christmas story out of Luke. Okay, and we see that Zacharias, uh, John's father, was doing service in the temple. And that means also his mother wa was to have been a Levite. Okay, so John, a Levite, being the cousin of Jesus. Now, check this out. That means Mary was a Levite, okay? And yet she was betrothed to Joseph, a son of Judah, all right? So right there you have Jesus being both the descent, and you can trace it through the lineages that are written there. And even if you got an old uh, 1611 King James replica, it's really cool in the opening uh, pages, you see where they mapped out the lineage, lineage of Jesus in a family tree. And you see that Jesus, this Yehushua, born of Mary, the virgin, betrothed to Joseph, is through Mary, the rightful high priest, and through Joseph, the rightful throne, the rightful heir to the throne of David in Judah. Okay, so that's really amazing. And what happens here when John baptizes Jesus, what's going on here is that he is transferring the authority of the high priest over to Jesus. And that's why. And so that's why, uh, you know, a confusing phrase here. That's what that means. So the next day, John sees Jesus coming up unto him and says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Now for a Levite, who is the one supposed to be doing the sacrificing of the lambs, a Levite saying, this is the Lamb of God. That's a bold statement. This is not a lamb which will merely cover your sins, but this is the Lamb of God that will take away the sins of the world. The sin, singular, the sin, the, the all-encompassing sin of the world. And this is he of whom I said, after me comes a man which is preferred before me, for he was after me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am come baptizing with water. And John bore record saying, I saw the spirit descend, descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Okay. Now look at this. This is Jesus, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And many times throughout scripture, definitely recognized as the son of God. As we saw in his birth, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, and she conceived. Now, Joseph was his ad adoptive father, okay, his caretaker on this earth. But he was not of the seed of Joseph, but he was legally Joseph's. And so, therefore, Jesus was legally the heir of the throne of David. And he was naturally born to be the next high priest, But the government, the even um, that well, the government was corrupt. But also the uh, you know the whole Jewish system was corrupt at this point through the Talmud and uh, you know the sex of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But you see here, the Spirit descended from heaven like a dove. So you have the Son, and you have the Spirit here pictured. Okay, descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending. So this is this is God speaking to the prophet. 
Okay, so the word of the Lord came to John and said unto him, The one upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bore record that this is the Son of God. So there it is. John, the high priest, said, This is the Son of God. John, a Levite, said, This is the Son of God. And I saw the Holy Spirit descending upon him and remaining upon him. And we see in, uh, so that was in John. Let me see, where is it in, I think, Matthew chapter 3 and maybe Luke chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. John says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. Whose hand, whose fan is, uh, uh, well, uh, then came Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you, and you come to me. So here it is. Jesus comes to John to be baptized, water baptized, to receive the mikvah. But John says, no, you should really be baptizing me. I know who you are. I testify that you are the son of God, according to John, John's gospel. He said that. And so he said, I, 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 you're supposed to be baptizing me. But Jesus, so why are you coming to me to be baptized? And Jesus answering said unto him, Allow it to be so, for thus becomes to fill all righteousness. So it is fit, this must happen in order to fulfill all righteousness. This becomes, it means this is fitting. Suffer it now. It means you've got to allow this to happen because this is what is going to fulfill all righteousness. Okay? And when Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight up, out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And then the next verse, Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Okay, so what you see here is in one in one scene right there you have the father the son and the holy spirit okay and yet even jesus testifies you and i father are one and we learn that this is that this holy spirit is the spirit of jesus okay and so i'm going to get the whiteboard out here all right going to get the whiteboard out here so, I did this with my with my five year old son today, okay, and he understood it. You have one God, okay, one God. Need a thicker marker for the TV screen. One God, okay, three persons. All right. One God, three persons. Now that works. Okay. One God, three persons. Okay. You got one God, three persons. You may have seen this before. But my son almost has this completely memorized okay you've got one God mm -hmm. 
one God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Father is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Son is God. But the Son is not the Father. The Father. I'll write that upside down. Okay. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. God is the Father, God is the Son, God is the Holy Spirit. The Father is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father, the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father, the Son is not the Spirit, and the Son and the Spirit is not the Son. Okay? So that that is the Trinity. Okay. The Father. You got one God, three persons. The fun. Now, you don't need an analogy, okay? This is what I'm trying to tell you. You don't need an analogy like an egg or a clover or anything like that to explain this, okay? Because my five-year-old son can understand this, okay? The Father is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. The Son is not the Spirit. The Father is not the Spirit, Okay, the Father is not the Son. The God is the Father. God is the Holy Spirit. God is the Son. The Son is God. The Father is God. The Holy Spirit is God. This little diagram right here is sufficient to teach the Trinity. And so I want to I want to give that to you. Okay. Now, the Father is in heaven. Okay. The Son, obviously, is Jesus, also known eternally as the Word, or the Angel of the Lord. In the uh, Old Testament, okay, he's never called the angel of the Lord in the New Testament because the apostles wanted to clarify that he is not an angel, okay? But he is the Son of God, even as John testified there. And then the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament what rested upon believers. But in this New Covenant, the Holy Spirit is in us, okay? So let me make that a little bit more. Uh, let me write that larger for you, okay? So I want you to get this. You got that? You got this diagram? Okay. Okay. The Father... is in heaven, okay, and he has given much authority to the Son, as you even see in Colossians, that it was, uh, that is through the word, through the Son, that the worlds were made, so Christ was formed, or Christ formed the word, Christ was not formed, Christ formed the world, okay, the Son, all right, that is Jesus, the man, the eternal word, okay, and uh, in the Old Testament, known as the angel, an angel means messenger, okay, so the messenger means the word, okay.
the angel of Yahweh. Okay? I think I did one of those backwards. But, so, the Son, the Father, and the Spirit. Okay? Now dwells in us. Okay? And so, fully God. Remember this. Okay. Let's do. It. All right. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, three distinct persons. Okay. Three distinct persons. What did Athanasius say? Let's go. Let me read that back to you. What Athanasius said. Athanasius said, We worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. Okay. Neither confounding the persons. So not confusing the Father with the Son or the Son with the Father or the Spirit with the Father or the Spirit with the Son. Okay. Not confusing the persons, not confounding the persons, nor dividing the substance. Okay, for there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father, so this is the Godhead, okay, the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit is all one. The glory equal, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Jesus has always been. In the beginning was the Word. Okay? In the beginning was the Word. The majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated. The Son uncreated. The Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Spirit incomprehensible. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, and the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet they are not three eternals, but one eternal. Okay? The Father is in heaven. The Son is Jesus, the man, the word, and the in the Old Testament was referred to now as the angel or the messenger of Yahweh. Okay? There were... Sometimes an angel, so a angel, a messenger, an angel of the Lord would visit men. But when you read in your Old Testament English Bible and it says the angel of Yahweh, usually in capital capitalized letters, the angel of the Lord. Okay, That's referring to the Christophany. Christophany means an Old Testament appearing, a pre-incarnate appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Isaiah says, or uh, Isaiah says that I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Okay, John tells us that Isaiah beheld Jesus' glory in Isaiah chapter six, because that's what he's, he, he references there about uh, the remnant being in the stump. And then there is uh, the Holy Spirit, who is fully God, and that fully God now dwells in us. And this is what signifies, this is what distinguishes Christianity from every other faith system in the world. This right here, the Spirit in us. Fully God. The Spirit is fully God. Okay? The Spirit's not the Father, and the Spirit's not the Son, but the Spirit is fully God. God is the Holy Spirit. Okay? Co-equal with the Father and the Son. Co uh, Majesty co-equal with the Father and the Son. Okay? This is what is so powerful. And if you don't understand this, if you don't understand that this is the, the, that the Holy Spirit is fully God, and He now dwells in us by grace through faith, and this is what Ephesians is telling us, okay? And this is what Galatians is telling us, all right? Is that the Spirit is on us. This, the Holy Spirit, who is fully God, is in us. The Ruach HaKodesh is in us. Whew. The creator of the universe. 
the one who moved upon the face of the waters and order came into being. That means if your life is in chaos right now and you don't know him, let me tell you what, if your life is in chaos and you don't know him, guess what? He wants to know you. He wants to come in you and set things right. He wants to get things in order in your life. Are you hearing me? He wants to get things in order in your life. When he moves upon those chaotic waters that you're drowning in, order is going to come into be, my friend. Are you hearing that? Oh, you better be catching a hold of that, I'm telling you. When the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes in to dwell in you, this is what is so, again, so powerful about Christianity being distinguished, the message of the cross, because he made peace by the blood of his cross. Are you hearing me? He made peace by the blood of his cross. He made peace by the blood of his cross. And now we can be, we are, we are in position by grace through faith. We are fully reconciled to God. And there is nothing, there is nothing that you can do that God's going to throw you away because I'm telling you, because he loves you. He loves you for God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, not the created, but the begotten. Okay. There's a difference. C.S. Lewis has a good uh, quote on that. Begotten does not mean created. Jesus is uncreated. And you know what? That's one of the, the best Christmas stories. If you go around telling people about Santa Claus, tell them about the real Santa Claus who punched a man in the face for denying the eternal sonship of Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Because uh, Arius, who the modern day uh, Arians are the Jehovah's Witnesses, okay? They hold to the same doctrine that Arius was condemned for in the early centuries of the church, like the 300s, uh, you know, just a, a few hundred years into Christendom. And this heresy was dealt with. Now, the way they used to deal with heretics back in the day, you wouldn't just cut somebody off because they said something the wrong way in a sermon, but you would investigate and interrogate them, okay? And not, not in a harsh way, but in like, hey, we want to really understand, are you really teaching this stuff? Like, is this what, when you say this, is this what you really mean? Have you really thought about that? Okay. So when, when you're out watching a lot of these YouTube videos, just a, a lot of, a lot of this uh, heresy hunting and stuff, it's just bunk and they're just trying to get clickbait. Okay. They're not really trying to teach you the word. They're just trying to make a name for themselves and build their own tower on the controversy of gossip. Okay. So yes, I'm calling out you guys. All right. Now I don't have to name your name. You know who you are and I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. I'm trying to get you on the boat. Amen. Get on the ark, Jesus Christ. All right. Now uh, you have to once again, understand that the Trinity is a foundational doctrine. OK, if you have a different version of the Godhead that you're teaching than what I explained here tonight. And if you like, I'm not saying like, OK, if you have used an analogy like an egg or a clover that like, you know, you're a heretic. OK, you I, I understand that's like a good attempt. But it's unnecessary and ultimately it could if you take it to its logical conclusion, it does end in a heresy. All right. If you use the analogy of an egg or ice, uh, et cetera. Okay. Or a father and his son and a grandfather. Okay. Like, you know, that is, that is, uh, just as bad. Okay. Um, but you can repent of that. I, I don't think, uh, most people that, that use those analogies, I don't think that they really mean that. I don't think that they, uh, have really taken that to the logical conclusion. Uh, for if they did, they would see the error, but I'm sure I'm, you know, there's a, uh, I'll, I'll put that, uh, that St. Patrick's day video in the, uh, in the comments. I'll try to do that or tag it somewhere. Uh, where's the YouTube? Yeah. On YouTube, it'll pop up there on the replay. Okay. Um, but 
you know, you've got to, you got to stay away from that stuff. Okay. Stay away from using analogies. Okay. I'm telling you that, that, uh, the triangle there with the circles, that's going to, my five-year-old son understands that. Okay. So you don't need to use, uh, creation to explain the creator. Okay. He is past finding out, and yet he's commanded you to diligently seek him. Isn't that a beautiful mystery? Now, the scripture says he dwells in unapproachable light, and yet he clothes himself in darkness. My, 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 what a beautiful, mysterious Savior and Lord and Master we have. I do not believe that even in the the, the expanses and uh, and millennia of eternity that we will ever come to fully know him because if we could he would cease to be elohim he would cease to be the mighty one of mighty ones he would cease to be the the most high and yet he's commanded us to pursue him and i'm telling you i am just so looking forward to the day when I see him face to face and this and the, just this this being who exists in three persons is just more beautiful and incomprehensible as as Athanasius said he is incomprehensible and so it, you're right you're right there Troy Alethea Ministries he said we need more explicit teaching on this essential doctrine you're definitely right, brother. And hey, if you're, I want to, I want to give a shout out to Alethea here. If you are uh, anywhere around the Louisville, Kentucky area, and you ever go downtown Louisville uh, on the Walk Bridge, it used to be the Train Bridge, uh, and you see these fellows out there, uh, give them some blessings, stop and pray with them, okay? Encourage them. All right, they are down on that bridge and in the uh, and at U of L, uh, the University of Louisville campus. Uh, out there on the street sharing the gospel. Okay, so you need to go check out their YouTube channel as well, right there, Aletheia Ministries. Okay, definitely, definitely doing the work of the Lord there. Okay, have with you here. Uh, once again, you guys, I'm just so blown away by this. Uh, the message of the cross in Malawi, man, like uh, God is just, uh, just exploding things out here. And now, uh, thank you to because of your generous support. Now, this ministry network in Malawi can begin generating their own funds to self sustain themselves as a ministry and to begin blessing other ministries. Okay, so the Billy Jones Tailing Shaw now in production in the nation of Malawi, my friends. And there's the, the very first uh, product, brand new, was able to buy for them, uh, the very first uh, manual and electric, um, you know, tr uh, uh, sewing machine there. So uh, thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, you can go on the website, neverforgettheblood.org. There's uh, there's support links right there popping up, okay? Uh, everything that you give into this ministry goes to support such things like that, okay? And our, our where we are uh, providing a free uh, elementary education, primary school education to the children of brick slaves in uh, Southeast Asia, in Pakistan, okay? We are running a Christian school over there. All right, and it is all because of your generous support that we're able to do such things. And so anything you give uh, is tax deductible. Uh, and if you give right now, right now, uh, up until uh, December 31st, if you pledge to give at least a minimum of $5 a month or up to $100 a month through the Facebook page, if you select the option and you click the button that says donate monthly, and if you choose a minimum of $5 a month, Meta, Mark Zuckerberg, Meta has a firm that they will uh, match your donation 100%. Okay. So if you give $5, we get $10. Okay. In order to do these kinds of works. Okay. 
in order to do these kinds of things and so and stirring you up to do the same amen all right so we do we provide christian education and humanitarian aid around the world so uh we are receiving your year-end donations uh up until uh you know december 31st but if you choose to donate monthly through facebook okay and so it doesn't mean you manually log on there, but if you need the link, if you can't figure out how to do it, you, you need the link, just send me a message or put a comment down here below and I'll, I'll make sure you do that. I'll tell you, I, I mean, it would be amazing if we can get, you know, if, if we can get a uh, hundred people to just give $5 a month, that would, that would do phenomenal, phenomenal things for this ministry, phenomenal things for this ministry work. And we'll be able to sew back into you by giving you uh, some products and some free resources, okay, just that we'll just send straight to you just as a thank you, all right? So uh, we want to be able to do that for you. I don't know, it just does something to me. But anyway, hey, until next time, just see to it that no man steal that crown and never forget the blood. I love you. Bye for now.